Hello chess variant lovers, in this video I'm going to show you an interesting endgame that can happen in two PyChess variants, Synergies and Empire. As you can see in those variants there's a bunch of fancy pieces, but what they do is a topic for another video. Today we're going to focus on just the kings. Those four pieces are kings, they move like kings and they are subject to check and checkmate. The reason behind using a different image for the goal of the red king is purely aesthetic and thematic. There are three additional rules, both in Synergies and Empire, that will be relevant for the endgame. The first is king face-off. The player is never allowed to make a move resulting in their king facing their opponent's king directly in rank and file with no piece in between. So for example in this position, this move is illegal, because now the kings are facing each other. But all the other are, including this one here, the kings are on the same file but there's a pawn in between so this is legal. The same things work horizontally, so for example here the king is not allowed to go here, and for red to move they're not allowed to go to any of these squares. And this also means a piece can be pinned to a king, for example here the kings are not facing each other, but if the knight were to move anywhere they would, so any knight move is illegal. The other rule is camp mate, as you can see the first and the eighth ranks are highlighted and there's a reason for it. There is an extra rule, whenever you get the king to the back rank, you win the game, winning like this is called camp mate. Also, moving the king there is still illegal if it result in the kings facing each other or the king being in check. The third additional rule is stalemate is not to draw like a normal chess, but it's a loss for a stalemate player. For example, here the red king can't move here because of the rook and can't move here because of the king face off. So, with red to move, this is a stalemate and red loses the game. So, with those extra rules, can you win the game with only kings left? Of course, you can. For example, in this position, white moves their king closer to the back rank and so does red. And now white wins by camp mate. This is pretty straightforward. Whenever you have the kings, just count how many squares white away from getting the camp mate, how many moves red, and whoever is the lower number away wins. And if the number is the same like here, the player to move wins. But this is pretty straightforward. Let's have a look at another example. Here, white king is closer to their own rank than the red. And remember, this king can never face each other. White king cannot go past this line or whatever line the red king is, and red can't go past the whites. So can we, it's impossible, so can I still win this? Let's see. White moves here, now red is restricted from moving here and here, so they have to retreat. White keeps following, red retreats. We are this position now again, red can go to 7th rank, can go to f8, so he needs to retreat towards the corner, white just keeps following. And we are this position, the red king can't go here because of king face off, and can't move here because they are touching the enemy king. This is a stalemate, so white wins. And if at some point before red try playing a different move, for example going here, white can just keep following, and eventually suffering red king in the corner. So once we got this position with the king's knights move away from each other, this was very straightforward. Just one king keep chasing each other and the other got eventually stalemated. Except you might ask, well, okay, white king is knights move away from the red, and the red king is what knights move away from the white, so what determines that white is winning and not red? We'll get to this back later, but now I have a puzzle for you. Let's put red king on one of these three squares. Assume white king is to the below to the right and it's white to move. In a moment I'm going to show you a diagram where I'm going to color each square depending on the eval if we put white king there. Green will mean white is winning, red will mean red is winning, yellow means this will be a draw. Feel free to pause the video and try to figure out what pattern you would expect to see. So here is the solution. Disappointed. Honestly, I was a bit disappointed when I saw this for the first time. I expected a bit more intricate pattern with red and green and possibly yellow squares interlaced and some sort of opposition playing a role, but turns out it might be much simpler. Let's get back to this position. The green king is running along this diagonal, white along this, and the chase ends either here or here and then the white side is supposed to retreat. As you can see, the white square are further apart on this diagonal, so only red can be forced to retreat, and this is why red loses. Fortunately on its square board, no matter where we place the kings, always the same king will be winning on both ends of the diagonal. For example, if you move both kings one square down, and look at those diagonals, still white is winning on both sides. And if you go one square further, now red is winning on both sides. However, if the game was played on, for example, 10 by 8 board, it could get much weirder. Let's have a look at this position and draw the same diagonals. If the chase were to end here, red would win. And if it were to end here, white would win. 
So this position is a mutual Zugzwang. If it's white to move, the trace would go this way, and here it ends at white support to retreat, and eventually get stalemated. And if the starting position were red to move, the trace would go the other way, and red would lose. And if we place the kings like this and look at the same diagonals, this is a win for the side to move for the exact same reason. And of course, positions like this would affect the evil of positions of the kings further apart, but let's keep it simple and stick to the 8x8 board. So if white gets their king to this diagonal or beyond it, the furthest red could get is here, which means white is winning on both ends of the diagonal, so getting his king to this green area wins the game. Assuming, of course, white king is to the right of the red, if it's not, we need to flip this shape. Meanwhile, red is trying to get the king here. Once you view the endgame less race like this, it's easy to see the best strategy is to run the king diagonally towards this area. And once you can't, because the opponent king is blocking you, run orthogonally also towards the direction. Let's have a look at a simple example. Here white is allowed to make one diagonal move, also restricting the red king. As red can no longer run in this direction, they have to run vertically, so they move here. White continues the race, reaching the zone, and now white will win. Let's have a look at another example. Here white can make one diagonal move, and so can red. Red already reached the winning zone, but just as a demonstration, let's have a look at how this could continue. Why can no longer run diagonal to king face off rule, so it runs vertically, and so does red. We reach the position when their kings are blocking each other, and red will win. Also, when I said this is the best strategy, I meant it gets the king to the winning zone as fast as possible, also restricting opponent's king as much as possible. It doesn't necessarily mean this winning the as possible moves. If we will go back to this position as the engine, it says, yeah, king f7 is winning, but in 10 moves, king f8 wins in 8. Don't ask me why. If someone will play king f8 against me, I will get a little suspicious they might be using the engine. I'm kinda kidding, but also kinda not. If you can get to the winning zone in one move, just do it. Don't bother calculating which move wins faster. So once you reach position with king versus a king, all you need to know is if you rush it run diagonally while you can, then run orthogonally. And once you get king's knights move away, just follow enemy king. If you did so and lost means you are losing from the start. But of course in a game this is not enough, it's also important to know the evil of the endgame before trading the last piece. Let's have a look at this position. White's on the 4th diagonal from the corner and is trying to get to the 7th. Red is on the 5th and is trying to get to the 7th. No who calculating diagonals this way because white king is to the right from the red. If it was on the left we would be counting like this. Anyways, getting from the 5th diagonal to the 7th takes 2 moves, from 5th just 1, and this is why red wins. Let's have a look at this position. Again, white is on the 4th diagonal, red is on the 5th, and again red wins. This time, getting from 4th diagonal to the 7th took, would take white 3 moves, while getting from the 5th to the 7th would take just 2. However, in this position, Again, white is on the 4th diagonal, red is on the 5th, but this time white wins. Why? If we go back, white was allowed to make one diagonal move and then was running orthogonally, red was forced to run orthogonally from the start, and this one extra tempo means white wins. So if you want an explicit rule, count the number of diagonals for both kings. If the side to move has the same or higher number, they win. If they have a lower number but at least 2, they lose. They have exactly one less, the extra tempo from running cross for diagonal will be critical. So look at the rectangle with broken in the corner. If the shorter side is odd, the side to move will get one extra diagonal and they will win. If it's not like here or here, they will lose. Before I go, I have one more thing to show. I'm going to show a few diagrams on rectangular boards. Just like before, with red king fixed and placed, white to move. With white king on the green score, white wins. On the red, red wins. Still, I couldn't find a single draw on any board size. Don't ask me to explain what's going on here, just enjoy those patterns. And if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to like and subscribe.